Hey guys, it's me, Philip Ring, also known as Phil Does Hair and Phil Does Everything on social media. For those of you that don't know, I am a hairdresser. I travel the United States teaching people hair coloring techniques, but last year I got into hair replacement and I want to teach you guys a couple tricks on how to blur blend and make your men's hair replacement clients even happier through adding color to make their hair look more invisible. So I'm actually wearing one. I don't know if you guys can tell. I, I haven't made a video since I did this one. I probably should have just done one with this hair because I, well I was actually doing it myself and it could have been an epic fail but it ended up turning out pretty good. The only thing is that I colored it, I cut it and I applied it on my own and it ended up looking really good. I haven't taken it off or changed it. It's almost been like three weeks. I'm gonna get it taken off and a new one put on, which I'll film on the 23rd of this month. Let me just tell you guys what I'm gonna do. As a colorist, there's a couple things that I found that help make these men's hair replacement look even more believable. I would say that adding a shadow root is probably one of the best things that you can do to blend. It just looks even better having darker roots. Otherwise it would just look like dark hair and blonde hair. Today what I'm gonna do, so A, I always recommend doing a shadow root. B, you know, hair replacements have been around a long time, but I'm trying to teach you guys new ways to do them. And I always cut my fringe a little short. Yeah, I always cut like the area right around my face a little short so that I don't, when I'm pushing my hair away from my face, I don't accidentally lift like the hair piece at all. I do it with the razor so that it's blended. The other thing is that I don't blend this, the length on the top in with my length on the bottom because connecting them will give more of a round head shape and I kind of imagine cutting my hair like a flat top and then I push the sides down, so I end up getting these long pieces that kind of hang over. Now, the thing is, it looks great, but I feel like it could look even better and even more natural. As it is right now, it kind of just looks like I have light hair on top, dark hair on bottom. Like, maybe I had it all bleached out and then I decided to not retouch the roots, and that's okay, um, but I want to do something a little bit different because you can see from the back, that it does kind of look like, you can see that there's something different up here than there is down here. What I wanna do right now is, I'm gonna color my hair and give it a little creative coloring technique to help you blend your hair replacement even better. All right, oh, I got this, not that it matters, but I got this um, cape from Sally's and I like it because it has hand holes in it for clients that need to use their phone while they're working, like while they're getting their hair done, like me. Um, I like this. So, this is what I look like without my hair piece. This is what I look like with the hair piece. For those of you that haven't seen a video about the hair replacement, I'll um, insert one now so you can see just like a little clip of what that looks like while I mix my color up. All right, so hopefully you guys like. Hopefully you guys liked that. That video is going viral on my Instagram currently. Last time I checked, I made it yesterday, and I think it's like at three hundred thousand views. Or was it? Yeah, a day and a half ago. It's like at. No, it was. It was. Sorry, I made it a day and a half ago, and it's at two hundred and some odd thousand views. I think that's pretty awesome. So, let me go into what I'm doing here. I'm using Joyco Lumashine Six Silver Blue. Um, I'm choosing a color that's a little bit lighter than my uh, sides. Um, I'm a level 5, I usually use a 5 ash. And I'm doing 10 volume, I would use a 5 volume but I don't necessarily, I don't have any right now. So 10 volume from the same brand is perfect. I like this 6 silver blue because it truly is like a gunmetal kind of color. Um, it might even be a little bit blue at first, that's okay. Um, I think the guys for the most part, tend to look better with ashy hair. So, um, I wanna shout out this company. I didn't pay for these, I got these for free. This is the new Framar uh, bowls. You can see that they've come out with a new collection. They're just like, 
make these really cool colored, like holographic stuff and I think it's pretty awesome. What I've done is I've just mixed the Lumashine 6 Silver Blue um, with the 10 volume equal parts in a beaker just so I could, I always measure everything. I'm just gonna pour it in here. Now, the technique that I'm gonna teach you guys today is something called color blocking. I think um, knowing to add a root shade is already going to blend the color even more, make it look more like connected to your head. But what I want to avoid is it looking like blonde hair on top and dark hair on bottom. I want it to look like I did something more with purpose. So, all I wanna do is leave a blonde patch or blonde panel. Um, I think that's gonna look cooler. I've already been wearing this for two hair shows, two or three hair shows. So, changing it up will be um, a good idea. So I've got the color mixed up. I only mixed half a bottle of uh, the Luma Shine 6 Silver Blue and the equal parts of the developer. All right, so instead of just doing the roots, what I wanna do is kind of, you can either do a couple things. You can like do a zigzag and whatever you separate out that's on the bottom of the zigzag, you can color that dark and what that does is it it lets people think that the connection for where the hair on the top is and where the hair on the side is, is higher. So it's going to give people, it's gonna give the illusion that if I was wearing a hair piece that it'd be up higher and if anybody was looking for the hair piece at all, they wouldn't be able to find it right away. So, um, because it's gonna be, it's actually much lower. It's, it's like right in this side, this area. So, Instead of doing just like a zigzag or um, instead of doing just like low lights or anything where the sides, the top and the bottom blends, I'm going to actually probably just do leave a triangle of blonde here and color everything else dark. The reason that I'm doing that is so that it looks like I had more of a color that was done with more purpose. like. This kind of looks like I was just all blonde and then my roots grew out and I want it to look like I Didn't just have my whole hair blonde that I had like um, I don't know just something that had taken more thought to do, you know, so let's section it out and I might even re um, Do the shadow root on this as well because it's kind of gone a little warm But so what I'll do first, before I do anything, is I'm just gonna outline my area on the roots. What that will do is keep the hair away, out of the way from what I'm about to do. So I'm just gonna get started and covering all this So I'm just gonna start coloring the hair. I love the Luma Shine. If you work with it really fast when you first mix it, um, it's pretty liquidy and then it's gonna get kind of thick. So don't be slow if you're going to work with the Luma Shine. Make sure your hair is clean. Outline just the roots to keep them away and then I'm just gonna paint on the surface of everything that I feel like needs color. Alright, after I've colored this side in the areas that I feel like are going to be pushed out of the way, I'm just going to comb it to make sure that all of the hairs are going to get color. So once you've combed it a couple times, go ahead and reapply that color right over the top of that. So the reason it's important to know that I'm picking a color that's lighter than my natural color and one thing that I should say that's really important is the color that I'm using is a demi-permanent hair color so even though it's going to be dark um, it's it may change my natural color a little bit but because it's not darker than my natural color it won't change it a ton. It might look a little bit more shadowed, 
But if you picked a darker color, you'd need to be a lot more neat with your application. All right. So now I'm going to go to the other side. And I kind of am really digging the idea of having this be like a big panel of blonde. So like I said, once again, you're going to go and outline your section. Just to keep it out of the way. Rude. This, that was a hater. So, and then just kind of covering everything on the top like this. So you'll see that this is going to start changing color to a dark silver. We're gonna leave this on for 20 to 30 minutes and um, we'll see what, what we get in the end. Ideally, it's just gonna look like I gave it just a cool pattern instead of just like an all over blonde. I think that people could kind of tell that I had a hairpiece on in, uh, when they were walking behind me and stuff like that at the hair show. So, um, we're gonna try to prevent that from happening again by letting them think that maybe I only have a hairpiece on the blonde piece. I love that I can change my hair as often as I want. That's probably the coolest part because as a hairdresser, I could technically color this before I put it on, which is what I did, but I didn't realize how much out of the hairpiece that I was actually going to use, and so I didn't want to just have, I don't want to color it and then end up cutting it all off, so this is what I'm doing instead. So I had a little product in there, that's why you can kind of tell that I'm kind of struggling with the combing. One thing that you want to do is just take it and go back and forth with your brush, not just um, not just one direction. That'll help move the hair around, and you'll get a better application, like especially here on the side. So if I if I just go down like this, I might miss some areas. But if you go side to side, you might. What you'll end up doing is surrounding all of the cuticles with color. So as long as you can get the comb through, I'm using wider teeth. Um, as long as you can get the comb through, and you can kind of feel areas that need more saturation or less saturation. So, you know, I only used a half a bottle and that's all I needed. You may use more, but more than likely, you probably will only use a half a bottle. I like the silver blues from Draco because they're really, really, really like very masculine colors um, for guys for any kind of blending, blurring, coloring. Um, and for women, it's like like the 10 BS or the 10 silver blue. So the dark ones are silver blue, the light ones are silver blues and the dark ones are blue silvers. The 10 silver blue is the truth when it comes to like a light stainless steel toner. Okay, so now that I've got all of that color on, I want to do my roots, and this is how you're going to do it. You just get a new brush, so I've got this cool new brush from Framar, and you're going to hold the hair away and just tap in there, okay? Separate it. Open it up, and Typically, I only put the root shade on one side. It helps make it more uh, uneven. Like, you'll get kind of peaks and valleys. Um, but you need to make sure that you saturate through. So I keep, gotta keep them separated. So the reason that I'm recoloring the root shade is so that it will match the root shade that I've already done on the hair. 
and it was kind of turning a little warm, so I want to um, make sure that everything matches. Since this is going to be so um, so cool. Alright. You can see how dark my sides have gotten. That's called oxidation. So at first it's one color. And then um, as the peroxide reacts with the um, color, it ends up oxidizing into another color, which is the final color that it's going to end up as. I probably won't be rinsing this out in a shampoo bowl on my own. You gotta make sure that you let these colors process their full time because um, if color is still active, it can stain your hands and stain your bathtubs and stain everything else. So I can, you can cross check, but don't do too much coloring in the cross check. If you missed a whole area, go back through and find that. Um, you're not trying to make a really even root shade color. Remember, it's better if there's peaks and valleys. So I'm only gonna cross check through to the front. There we go. All right, so now we're gonna pro sorry, now we're gonna process for 25 minutes. All right. You can see it's about time to wash out. It has darkened as dark as it's gonna go. You can see my root shade. I pulled it just in tapping the roots. I've, you know, kind of accidentally given it some like low light that's gonna be in there. So I'm gonna go and wash it out now. Ooh, that looks really cool. Okay, so all you're gonna do now is use some styling cream. I'm using this Miracle Blow Dry Balm from It's a 10. Uh, this is gonna give it shine and detangle. These hair pieces have been processed so much that sometimes they can get tangly. So between this and a brush, use one, get one with like nice soft bristles. Um, I'll usually either use one of these um, that just have these kind of bristles, but I actually prefer the one with the boar hair bristle as well in it. So this is from a company called Pink Pewter. It looks pretty cool, so I'm just gonna dry this and uh, show you guys what it looks like. Whoa, that looks pretty cool. All right, I'm gonna show you guys what this looks like um, right after, but you can tell like now, even more than before, it just looks like I have a really cool haircut with a really cool hairstyle, and that was just from doing a little triangle. So. And I guess, ooh, now I got Cruella DeVille going on. Color blocking is a really cool way to color guys' hair. I find that color blocking for me is my favorite way because if you just do highlights, uh, a lot of times you can see like stripes, but this is a really masculine and aggressive coloring thing. And especially having it be disconnected with the root shade is gonna make it like blend even more. You're gonna love it. All right, so there you guys go. With no other product in my hair, you guys can see how much more interesting something like this is than just having like blonde on top, dark on bottom. This is probably like, wow. I am so happy with it. It looks super different and it looks super cool and it just looks more custom than just having Blonde on top and dark on bottom. Let me show you guys really quick. You guys can see like my hairline. I leave it short so that I don't ever have to worry about like when I'm pushing my hair up like this that it's gonna loosen my hair piece at all. It really won't. 
but if you were round brushing or pushing it back, um, maybe it might lift a little bit. So I hope you guys enjoyed this. If you guys liked what you saw, I know this was just pretty informal me doing my own hair, but I do other people's hair, and if you guys are interested in watching those videos, check them um, in my stream. I'm constantly trying to add more videos here. I, If you follow me on Instagram, you'll see all the work that I'm currently doing in my daily life, but uh, yeah, I appreciate you guys for watching. Hopefully, I gave you guys some tips on how to make your men's hair replacement clients even happier with how cool their hair looks when you do it, especially because it's a new world, it's a new day, and these hair pieces have come a long way, but we can even take them even further and make something epic. Like That being said, thank you for watching. If you guys want to follow, subscribe, comment, I'd love it, and I will see you guys again on the flip side.